Paris is doing so many good things, but it's like Paris gives you a big warm hug for riding a bike and then it slaps you. The best city in the world for bikes. I'm gonna see absolute crap. And then it hugs you and then it slaps you. He just keeps shooting himself in the foot. I shouldn't have to ride my bike around this fucking city and interpret what the people who designed it were intending me to do. Paris is still trying to go, oh, what do we do? What do we do? I don't know, you wanna do that? So you cannot come to Paris and talk about bicycle infrastructure without talking about this street right here, Boulevard Sebastopol, or Boulevard de Sebastopol. All the street signs around me can't agree which one they want to call it. This is the busiest bicycle infrastructure in the city of Paris. This is where all the records that are set take place, right here. There were strikes back in 2019, pre-pandemic records were set during the pandemic it boomed. Right now, it's an average of 11,000 a day. During the pandemic though, it hit 17,000 on one day in September. A new record was set in November 2022. There were strikes in Paris. 26,000 people on bikes. Coming down this narrow, bi-directional on this incredibly important artery in Paris, right? North-South. So space has been made for bikes here. You can see the width just in this shot. It's narrow because there's delivery drop-off, then it widens. And if you take this all the way up to Gare de l'Est train station, it just kind of does this all the way. You never know what you're going to get. Wide, not so wide. Wide, not so wide. And never really wide enough for an average of 11,000 a day and peaks over 20,000. This has got to be better, man. On the other side of the street, there is a bus lane. And you can ride your bike in the bus lane in Paris. But, you know, it should be a unidirectional on both sides to correspond to the latent desire of Parisians to use this street to get around, man. This is where the potential lies. This is where you do your best work. This is where you show that you are taking the bicycle seriously as transport. One little quick note about bus lanes and bikes, okay? Not a good thing. I never recommend it anywhere in the world buses and bikes, motor vehicles and bikes do not mix at all. Most cities in the world, this is absolutely the case. I kind of have a little, you know, 40% changing my mind about it in Paris because the buses stop so frequently. This is an incredibly densely populated city. The stops are really short compared to most other cities that I know. So just when you're riding along the bus lane and you go, oh God, there's a bus coming up from behind, man. Well, then the bus stops. You can actually most of the time, stay ahead of the buses. Um, so don't do this in other cities unless you have an incredibly dense bus network with frequent stops every couple hundred meters, man. That's the only context that it technically kind of works. And then again, I would never recommend it. Physically separated bike lanes for the win, for the world. But right here, this is an exciting street in Paris. And oh, you just want it to be so much better. Because the future really starts right here. All right, on this street, a lot of cool things happened. A lot of potential here on Rue de Rivoli, main artery from east to west. First of all, just a few years ago, pre-pandemic, the city of Paris went, yeah, okay, let's do this. Let's put in a bi-directional. And that's what you see here, physically separated with uh, good solid stones as curbs the entire stretch of this street. An iconic street in Paris. That was kind of cool, but what am I gonna say now? Why a bi-directional, right? It should be unidirectional on both sides of the street. It's okay wide for most of the length, but still, man, oh, missed opportunity there. But then the story gets more interesting. The pandemic hits city of Paris, really one of the cities in the world that did the most to enable people to ride bikes by implementing a huge network of Corona piece, temporary bike lanes because of the pandemic. And Rivoli is where they really made some impact. It is a massive ocean of asphalt dedicated to bikes. Look at that, man. You have the original bi-directional from a few years ago, then you have this other section off to the left. So much real estate dedicated to bikes. This entire stretch is only one way for cars. Bikes can move freely in either direction. 
some other people perhaps on YouTube and Instagram look at this and go, oh my God, it's amazing. Oh, it's just lots of space. And that's really what you see when you see this, a lot of space. Does it make sense? I don't think so. There's 9,000 people on average riding bikes on this street. That could be a lot more, absolutely. But just creating a whole bunch of space because you can is a little bit cool and it's also a little bit irritating because the designs are not good enough. Make it this wide, but unidirectional, both sides of the street, that is where Paris should be headed. They did it because they could and they did it boldly, like few other cities on the planet. I love that about Paris. But when I look down at the design, I'm going, oh man, you were so close. Here's a car lane. It is a turning lane. So you come from way over on the right side. They've literally made this real estate a turn lane. <laughs> That's a lot of square meters just for once in a while, a car turning across a bi-directional cycle track. But yeah, Rivoli, man, so close. So damn close, so impressive, so bold, and yet so far, right? It's fixable. All the space has been allocated, cars have been elbowed out of the way, buses that come down here, we know how to design a bike lane with a bus stop. This is another place like Sebastopol where the city of Paris should be, just be putting their best designers on the job. Really just making this one of the world's great bicycle streets. It's not there yet but it could be very, very soon. So this is uh, Boulevard de Magenta, an important artery. It's like I keep saying that, like a lot of roads in Paris are really important roads. This is a little bit of bicycle infrastructure museum in Paris. This is vintage stuff. This was one of the first really protected bike lanes that the city put in. It was the former mayor of Paris, Beton de la Noy. It was revolutionary when it appeared. Painted green, which they used to do. Haven't seen much of that lately, actually. They kind of got rid of that stupid green paint idea, which is absolutely ridiculous because you have to keep painting it, you know? This was pretty wild when it showed up. It's like 2005, 2006, around there. All the way up, unidirectional, both sides of the street on the correct side of the bus stops, but man, it's narrow. You ride that today and riding around with Romain, the guy behind the camera on the cargo bike, geez, that's a big ass he has on this, on this bike lane with his cargo bike. And a lot of the logistics cargo bikes that they have now in Paris, this really just doesn't work very well for them at all. And riding along here, I've done this so many times through the years. Yeah, you just got your fingers on the brakes the whole, I'm not doing that now. <laughs> you have your fingers on the brakes the whole time because you never know who's gonna come. A lot of tourists in Paris, of course, and they're not used to this. It was really an amazing effort, really ahead of the curve for most cities in the world. But now it's kind of like, oh my God, you're doing so much better thing. But you got trees on either side. You got some parking you can take away. That's gonna be a great thing road space that's where we're gonna go with that right the funny thing for me probably not for the people I'm gonna talk about is that this bike lane was put into a manual that was made by NACTO the North American Association of Transport officials I think right um, that was really cool when NACTO showed up because all they had in America was ASHTO which is all the traffic engineers and you know we know how <laughs> destructive they've been through the decades but they literally looked at that and went oh my god this is so amazing let's put it in the manual as best practice design I remember seeing that a few years ago man I'm going oh my god I kind of lost a little bit of respect for NACTO then and especially with a lot of the bike stuff that they do in their manual for how to do things right you know oh really though really this come on man yeah, it was cool back in the day when it showed up. This is not something that you put in a manual. You put all the other cool stuff from other cities in a manual. Despite the narrow width of it, Magenta is actually the second busiest street for bikes in Paris after Sebastopol. So that is an indicator that this is an important route. People need this route to get um, back and forth in the city. So this is really a place where you, you, know, you muscle it. You roll up your sleeves and you do some hard work. Good work was done. Foundations were laid. Make it better. Skateboard? Oh, skateboard? Skateboards are cool though, right? Cool. I remember when London won the Olympics and they hosted them in 2012 and part of the preparation for getting London ready for it, these massive 
Olympic Games was, ooh, bike lanes. That's what they're saying. We're going to build bike lanes to all the venues. People are going to ride a bike, man. Uh, that was exciting. Nothing happened. Really, nothing happened at all. Then, who was next? Rio de Janeiro. You might be surprised to know that Rio de Janeiro has 3.5% modal share for bikes. It's not a bad bicycle city in the context of the region that it's in. And they said also the same thing. Oh, bike lanes, man. We're going to do bike lanes between the venues. Yeah, no, that didn't work out. Tokyo. Oh my God, they were next in line, right? 14% of the population of Tokyo ride a bike every day. I'm thinking, no brainer. And they didn't do anything, which ended up not mattering because <laughs> it was Corona and nobody could go to Japan to watch the game. So I've been disappointed three times, but now here's the whole point of the story you've been waiting for, right? Harris has said that they are going to enable people to get to and from all the venues, which are all very centrally located. And if you like the fancy catchphrase of their temporary bike lanes here, Corona Piste, Corona bike lanes, you're gonna love this. Olympiste, Olympic bike lanes. Really cool, I'm not making fun of it. I think it's really cool the way they brand things here. So the Olympiste network is being built as we speak. I'm standing next to a stretch of it here. Paris has said that there will be 60 kilometers of Olympiste connecting all of the venues. A lot of it will be on existing infrastructure, upgraded a lot of it, maybe some of it's just gonna be branded. 30 kilometers of new infrastructure is underway. In addition, 3,000 new Vilib bikes will be provided, 10,000 parking spots for bikes at all of the venues. That is all really, really cool. I just was riding past the uh, Parc des Princes, one of their massive football stadiums, and there was like bike parking out there, like guarded bike parking and for free. If there's a football match with uh, Paris Saint-Germain, um, you can park your bike there and somebody will watch it for you for the duration. That's pretty cool. So same, same thing will be applied to the Olympics, and I think this is all really, really cool. Paris is good at branding this stuff. Disclaimer, why the hell would a city want the Summer Olympics these days? I have no idea. But Paris is also building on the fact that it'll all be existing sports infrastructure and stadiums and everything. It's going to be kind of very sustainable and, you know, not going to go bombastic with uh, building brand new stuff like Qatar and the World Cup. Oh, oh my God. I still don't understand why cities actually want the Olympics. It's a massive strain on resources and economy and everything. Okay, I'm wandering now, but there's really only been one city in the modern history of the Olympic Games that really benefited from having them in an urban planning context. Usually, it's just a whole bunch of money out the window, yeah? But Barcelona, right? Barcelona was not a beach city at all in Europe until they got the 1992 Olympics and then they buried a motorway along the ocean and now we think of Barcelona as like a beach city, right? The Olympics did that. They opened up the city to the sea and did a lot of really good urban planning in connection with that. It's really one of the only examples I can think of. So Paris is not going to have that problem because they're using existing infrastructure. But looking at some of the renderings for the infrastructure that they're going to uh, provide for people and it was only last week that they had a press conference and already in the renderings there's unidirectional then there's some bi-directional there's just a mix of infrastructure like this is an opportunity for Paris like the pandemic to put in new infrastructure right and make it permanent afterwards that's amazing Paris knows that and they're good at it man oh better than anywhere else in the world I would think that this is finally their opportunity to make a damn choice unidirectional best practice network or still just continuing the same old mishmash spaghetti infrastructure that can't connect up with each other, right? Just choosing the easiest solution on this street. Oh, can't be bothered. This is a bi-directional. This is really brand new asphalt on this street here. Why, do, why does Paris hate the shops on one side of a street? Why do they wish success for the shops on this side and just, like, just give a big finger to the ones on the other side with this bi-directional infrastructure in a densely populated city with so much amazing shop life, right? I don't understand it. So it's all really cool like the branding, like the, using the opportunity to put in more bike lanes, but then you just think, man, you're just missing the massive opportunity to finally make the right damn choice and completely and utterly transform this city for the better for bikes. Yeah, okay, so, and then there's this. This is a center running lane. At no point in the last 100 years, since best practice was established, did anybody think this up? Because it's stupid. Not anything a city should have. There are some cities that do have it. I know uh, Sao Paulo, uh, Washington DC, and Barcelona. Ooh! So here we are on a center running lane where the bikes are in the middle of the street. Why is this bad, Jordy? 
and some other French cities like Nantes, right? Anyway, it's a lazy solution. The road splits down here, so you have people coming in, but on the road at the end of the street here to the left, there's no bike infrastructure. So it's really only for people coming up this street, to Bigo, to arrive at Republique. So yeah, it's a weird solution. And you shouldn't have weird solutions. Weird bi-directional roundabout in one place, you know, and then a huge bi-directional along the Rivoli, and then unidirectional over there. I mean, you know, it's a video game, man. I shouldn't have to ride my bike around this fucking city and interpret what the people who designed it were intending me to do. It should be intuitive, and we know how to do this. And if you stand here as a bicycle urbanism tourist, this is also bring some popcorn, right? It's also amazing to watch how people just hack their way through the system, rejecting this design. I gotta go there, I'm gonna cut across car lanes. It is behavioral chaos here. And that is because people decide whether or not this design is good. They will reject a bad design and they will embrace a good design. Here, yeah, <laughs> they don't like it if you base it on their behavior. Get rid of this stuff, man. There are better ways to do it. Oh, tabernacle,